right, hey everybody. Today is June 19th, and today I'm gonna to be working on my market garden irrigation. I've got 13 beds left to finish. Um, I've done my whole market gardening. The main system is completely set up. All that needs to happen to that is planting. Um, so it's really cool. Um, so how I'm setting it up, this is my main timer set up for the market garden. This is four valve system using an orbit timer. If you look up the orbit irrigation timers, you'll find this one easily. So I'm going to be running um, half inch dot 700 half inch polyline. There's two types of polyline uh, half inch and I highly recommend that you use the 0.700. Uh, 0.710, there's a slight difference in between the inner and outer diameters, but 0.700 is the most common, so I advise uh, that you just buy 0.700. It's kind of like a similar thing that went on between, if, you're, if you remember, when they made burnable DVD drives, there was DVD minus and plus. Uh, and some drives only did minus, some only did plus. It was like a proprietary thing, and I think that's what's going on with the half inch, so get .700. The, the two forms are actually interchangeable, going one direction, I forgot which. Like a 710 can plug into a 700, vice versa. There's, I forgot, but just get 700. Okay, so I'll be rolling this line out, and I'm gonna be using a flow through irrigation system, which means on my bed, if this is my bed, I'm gonna have drip tape connectors on one side and the other side. The drip tape runs across, and that way water enters the bed from both opposite sides of the bed. That way, if there's a clog in one of the connectors, um, the water will push through it um, from each side. So like, say you had a clog in the middle of your drip tape and you only had water coming from this side, it would clog and stop in that center point. So the advantage of the flow through is that the water's also coming from this side. So if you have one plugged connector, it's not gonna ruin the whole system. If you have, if your drip tape is a disaster and it's full of clogs, then you'll have to replace it. But that's pretty rare. And flow through is not necessary, um, but I've seen other farmers online do it, and I wanted to try it out. It was a little bit more expensive for the parts, but um, I'm really curious to see if it helps the irrigation, like the watering pattern, if it's a bit more consistent, and if it minimizes leaks, then that's awesome too. So for that flow through system, uh, I'm using these connecting pieces that I made, and this is a design that I learned from my old farming partner, Jared, and it's awesome. What this allows you to do is control the, uh, the bed on and off. My drip tape will connect to these pieces here. These are twist on and off connectors for drip tape. There's many ways to connect the drip tape to the half inch. Um, there's a lot cheap, there's cheaper ways, there's more expensive ways. Um, I've outlined that in some of my other videos, so go ahead and check out. If it's not up yet, it'll be up soon. So, Having individual control over the beds is really nice because maybe you've cropped out a, a bed and you don't want that irrigated because there's nothing planted there. So it's kind of a waste of water. Maybe you want to keep the beds wet, uh, but maybe you don't. Maybe it's winter and you cropped out a bed. You don't want it to get any more wet. And if I have all my beds without an on off and I run the valve, all those beds on the valve are gonna get wet. Uh, so this gives you a little bit more control um, I can even, if I put it at like 45, it'll, it'll dump in about half the amount of water. So there's, you know, there's a little bit of customization that you can do with it, and it's not that expensive to set it up like this. There are cheaper ways to set this up, but this is like a middle of the road, I would say. It's like a dollar twenty for these pieces, eighty cents when you buy these in bulk on and offs. The T connectors, you need two of those. Those are about 80 cents as well, some 60 cents, something like that. So, you know, we're talking four bucks. Let's say each of these costs four bucks. So if you're doing flow through, you would need two of these per bed, so $8 per bed. I also like these connection pieces because when I want to take off the lines, all I do is untwist this and pull off the drip tape. It's really simple. Um, if you've seen my other videos where you use the, the free connection, not well, it's almost free, where you just use transfer barbs and quarter inch line, those are still very easy to take off. They just take a little bit more time, and I would say that maybe there's like a little bit higher chance of, of there getting some dirt in the line. But that's an awesome way to do it too, it's way cheaper. So another thing I like about this is when these line, when the other half inch is connected into here, you can actually bend this piece up and down. 
So I can take off my drip tape and then bend it up. And now it's completely off of the bed and out of my way so that I can rake, pull roots out of the ground, whatever needs to happen, this irrigation piece is out of the way now. So I, I really like this design, I highly recommend it. If you think it's too expensive, maybe try it out on a, a couple beds and see if you like that feature of doing on and off. Okay, so now I'm gonna lay it out. So I'll lay out the half inch first on both sides um, and I wanna get it super secure, super into the, the place that I need it to be. I don't wanna have too much extra pipe, too little pipe, and I'm gonna stake it down, get it in the position that I want. Then I'll be laying these out and attaching them in. And the final step is just to run out my drip tape and connect it. Instead of using inoculant, I'm gonna use my worm key as an inoculant because that has um, a plethora of really good bacteria. We'll see. Um, never had this before. See if it helps the uh, seeding percentage success. Some really nice looking beans here. Johnny Seeds hooked it up. Provider OG Bush Beans. These are my favorite green be stringless green beans. We'll let those sit while I break the beds and prepare them for my seeder. this started, um, I'm going to pick up the entire roll, I put a weight on one end, I might put, put one or two more bricks on there, um, and then I'm going to start rolling it out to my final destination. I don't want to hook everything up yet because I'm going to be pulling on it, I might rip everything apart, it'd be a disaster. So um, I want to lay everything out first, get it in the right position, um, then I'll connect it to the valve. I'll check everything one more time to make sure it's positioned correctly and fits well. Um, then I'll move on to fit uh, my drip tape connecting on and off pieces. Okay, so I actually had a change of heart. And I'm going to spend the extra expense just to use these um, connectors. A lot of times I like to just run the half inch and it'll just bend like this. But because I've got such a small working area and I've got to fit wheelbarrows and all types of thing, people, um, I'm gonna use these connectors to keep everything as trim and neat as possible. So I'm actually gonna go back and connect this piece to the valve so that I can see um, the length that I'll need to match it up so that I can put this 90 in like right here. This is the edge of my bed. I'm going to be running uh, the half inch right to the edge of the bed and then putting on my on and off drip tape connection piece right there. Okay, so I'm back at my valves since I changed my mind a little bit. I'm gonna connect my half inch here. So in my hands here I have a, this is a half inch compression to a hose threaded adapter so I'm gonna put this in first. I always recommend that you're putting on your compression fittings before you're attaching it to threading because it takes a lot of force and a lot of finagling to get this thing on. And if you're doing this while it's attached to here, something's gonna end up breaking or wearing out quicker. Always attach your compression fitting first. Uh, most fittings for drip, it's all like this. Um, it's not a static piece like some other uh, female ends. The next piece um, is the pressure reducer. So my drip tape is 18 mil. I believe it's the thickest that you can get. With that, you can run 15 PSI. The normal PSI for just regular, your standard 8 mil drip tape is 10 PSI. Okay, so it's on there, hand tight. I'm not gonna over tighten it. And now all I need to do is attach this and we're good to go. So now when I pull this tight, 
at the other end, I'll get my measurement and I'll know where to cut and attach my 90. There's one more piece. You probably caught me. I need to attach the electronic valve. Valve on. And then with this orbit timer, you plug these connection pieces into the back. Okay, so now the valve's all set up and I'm just gonna attach my half inch to the bottom of the valve. Okay, we'll have to check this for leaks later. I've got all the kinks out, um, which I highly recommend doing with any type of hose. So to get the kinks out, you just wanna stretch the hose completely out. And when you twist it, you're gonna feel some resistance going one way and looseness going the other way. And you wanna um, unwrap it to get all the kinks out. If I left kinks in this, um, it'd be very difficult to work with and I wouldn't be able to get the exact angle that I wanted. So always shake it, get all the kinks out. Make sure it's as straight as it's gonna get. I've already aligned these beds, they're already in line. I wanna make sure that the, <coughs> that this piece is basically gonna be at the start of the bed. I may need to lose a little bit of my bed so that I can keep it nice and tight in there. So to get that distance, does not need to be perfect or exact. The tubes will bend where you want them to go. So something about right there. And make sure that you're remembering that this much distance of the half inch line is going to go inside. So take that into account when you're measuring. I'm doing this entire measurement by eye. Now the next step, I'm not going to create individual pieces from here to here. Um, that would take a lot of extra time. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to run the line from here all the way down to the other end of the market plot. Then I'll come back later and chop into the line and then it's attach, attach, and then move down to the next bed. Chop it in the middle, attach, attach, and I'll show you how I do that. So I cut a little bit long, always cut a little bit long. Once I cut the, the poly line, then it becomes obvious where the kinks are. If I go this way, I'm twisting, I'm getting more resistance. That's not the right way. I can feel it naturally wanting to unfold this way. So if I shake it a little bit, hold it loosely, it'll end up in the final position where there's basically no change. Just the end has a little bit of bend. I want to make sure that this is real nice and snug up to where I want it. I'm going to get out my 90. I'm going to run this line against the chicken uh, coop basically so that it's out of the way of the walkway and out of the way of any bed work that I need to do. So I could run this whole thing without fittings like this but then it just gets harder to install, it gets a little more janky and like I said because I've got this really tight small area um, I don't have much to work with so I need all the space I can get. So doing this with the 90 connections will give me that little bit extra space. Okay this one's ready. Now what I did at the other end, I didn't film it, but I put in one of these stakes. It's called an irrigation T or an irrigation stake. And you want to place the T on top of the hard plastic. This will give a really good hold. And where the fitting is, is where you want like the pipe's permanent location. So basically uh, by putting the T there, I was also I'm able to pull on this and get it tight and the location of where I want that pipe to be is perfect. It's perfect where I put it, I teed it where I wanted it, I teed it on the plastic so that when I pull it, it can't move. So now, when I put this one down, I'm not gonna put the T like this, I'm gonna put it like this so that when I pull that way, the T holds it and it will stay in this perfect position that I put it in. So the reason um, I'm being this anal about this, I want to make this standardized. These beds are 30 inches, the walkways are 10 inches. If I ever want to move this to another location, I can easily do that. All I have to do is make the same pattern, which is a 30 inch bed and a 10 inch walkway. And I can cut this whole irrigation system out and put it anywhere I want. Um, I might need to lengthen or shorten the line, the uh, drip tapes, but that's really easy to do. You just need one little connection piece to extend it. 
So that's kind of the advantage of setting it up this way. That's why I want to get all the measurements um, close to perfect. Okay, that's it. So now, see how I put the T? You can push it this way, but when I'm pulling it this way, it's not moving. So it's going to stay in this good position here. I'm looking down the lines of my beds. I'm going to mock this up just to uh, really feel it out. It's always good to uh, cut long. Okay, so here's how the irrigation's fully laid out. As you can see, I've laid out more of my, um, my drip tape on and off setups. I've installed one of them here. Um, and I'm going to do six beds on this one valve. So these, the last six beds here will be on a valve and then the seven beds here will be on a separate valve. And the reason that I set it up that way is because I'm worried about water pressure being an issue. Um, I'm running, you know, over a hundred feet of half inch. Also in this, in this region, um, right here, it gets a lot of shade until about 2 p.m. from this pecan tree here. The way I've laid out the line, uh, I don't actually have to measure anything or do anything except eyeball everything because I've measured everything ahead of time. And by measuring everything ahead of time is I laid out the, the beds exactly the same width and the walkways are exactly the same width. And, and now I've gotten my main line staked down and I, that's exactly the permanent place that I want to leave it in. Um, so now I know that when I cut into this half inch here, um, that it's going to be the correct position. So all I need to do is eyeball it and just center it. Okay, that looks about center. And I'm going to cut in the center of uh, this T onto the half inch here. So that's how I eyeball it and line it up. Done. So now uh, I just want to brush off the dirt and then I'm going to insert the half inch as far in as it will go and make it as tight as possible because it'd be nice if these pipes were almost touching in the center here because as I've laid out the pipe that was tight and the right length. So if I can make them touch then nothing will really change from how it was initially laid out. I'm going to install all of these right now and then I'm going to flush it um, some water through it and I'll come in with some electrical tape and tie these off and tape them. And then water will just be coming out of these. Um, and then at that point, all the, the system should be pretty flushed and I'll start planting my beans and then I'm gonna install the drip tape. All right, my next step here is I'm gonna plant my seed and then I'll lay out my drip tape. I've got 5,000 seeds here. And these are provider bush beans. They're like this really beautiful purple color. Um, so I've got my bean uh, seed plate in here. I've got my little plow that creates the hole for the seeds. Um, that's set at one inch. I'm gonna plant um, two rows per bed. And I like to plant two rows of these guys because um, you don't have to actually stake them or um, trellis them or anything because they just kind of like lean against each other and they grow really well. Um, like that and it saves a lot of work not having to um, build any sort of uh, structure for them. Nice, right, so I'm going to do two rows here. Um, for these beans I'm not going to soak them in any worm tea. We'll see if there's any difference. The I'd say the other bed sprouted about 80% which is actually what we claim on this seed here. So um, the seed pops out probably about every two inches on this cedar for um, the beans. So pretty good spreading ratio. I had to go back and fill in a couple holes, but it wasn't that bad. So I just wanted to show you guys how I set up my drip tape. I use a wheelbarrow, put a bunch of bricks in the front for weight or rocks, whatever you have that's heavy. And then I just put a steel rod through the center. Um, it's on like a spindle, so it's kind of set up to be rolled out. And then when you roll it out, make sure the drip tape's coming from underneath. That way, like the rotational energy will push it back towards the wheelbarrow. If you keep come from over the top and it's not heavy enough, it'll tip the wheelbarrow. Okay, so what I do is first, okay, I ran the line, um, the drip tape all the way to the other end. 
I undid the valve and blew out the water to get any debris out and then I connected the drip tape. So the other thing I did to, pre to prep on the other side, which I have not done on this side, is to anchor down these on and off drip tape valves. What I did on the other end, I'm just gonna replicate right here for you. So I get it into the position where it's at the beginning of the bed and I'm gonna put it on this back T here so that if I pull it this way or um, it's not moving. I did, I put the T in the exact same position on the other side. So now when I pull this, it's not gonna pull this whole on and off out of position here. And that way when I make my cut, that it's gonna be an accurate cut. And I want these strip tape to be pretty tight. When the water goes in, it's gonna expand and it'll get all kind of wonky. So we'll cut it here. We'll see how it does once I fill it with water. It's really easy to just pull these off and cut off a little bit more if um, need be. So I'm gonna blow it out. Any debris will come out. Shut it off. And then it's on. And then I can twist. Now it's connected. And then I just wanna pull on it, make sure it's tight, because when it pressurizes and it's if it's not fully tightened on there, it could blow off. That's happened to me before. Okay, I just want to highlight a couple things um, about when you're installing the drip tape. So first thing I want to do is get it tight with the other side. And um, a lot of times, it's hard to see, but the emitter is right here. Sometimes you're going to end up with the emitter right on top, um, the connector here. So if that does happen and it's right on top, that's really bad. Um, so odds are the other end is going to have a little bit of slack that you could cut out so that when you pull it taut again, um, it won't be right on top of the emitter. Luckily for me right now, uh, where I want to cut is basically even with the end of the green. That's going to keep it super tight. And I kind of squeeze the sides of the pipe to help um, open it. Sometimes I have to like stick my fingernail in there. And now that it's open, it's really easy. Um, a lot of times these nuts will um, not be totally loosened. You turn them to the right to loosen them. It's opposite of the normal threading pattern. So turn it all the way to the right so that it's fully loose. Push it on there, kind of hold it firm, get a couple twists on there, and then fully twist it on. And then that'll ensure that it's a really snug, firm grip on there. Now when I go to the other side, you can see that this is enough, almost enough, to fit on the connector. Um, but I don't want to do that because I want to have a little bit of play, just in case. So what I like to do is just cut in between the emitters halfway in between and then that will give me uh, about one inch is all that's needed to go on one of these connectors so if I need a little more give to go to either side just in case the emitter uh, um, ends up on top of the connector um, I'm able to adjust and, and customize it to the right size that I need also once the lines fill up um, the shapes of the cuts that I made might change um, some things will be looser some things will be tighter and I may want to adjust, so um, that's why having that little extra spacing is good. Here's a great example. I've pulled it tight, and the emitter is right on top of this thing. So what I'm going to do is cut so that it has just enough, about an inch, so that I can connect it to this piece. So this is going to be a little bit loose and long now. You can see how it can go up like this. So I'm going to go to the other side and snip off about an inch or two inches of the other side and then that will make it totally taut and um, they'll both have emitters close to the connector. So that's how you can solve that one issue. Either for drip tape or emitter line, any type of line. So I've got the provider bush beans planted um, and now I'm just running the irrigation to water in the seeds so I don't have to do it. And we'll see how good of a job it does. I may have to come back in the morning, I may soak it in by hand. but. 
if I run it for a couple hours, um, it should give a nice soak. I've got the lines um, inside of the track where I laid the seed. Okay, so I just checked out the entire plot. There's no leaks anywhere. Um, there's only water dripping out of the emitters. So um, I'm going to let it fully pressurize and then kind of look for spots where it's a little bit loose. The drip tape will start to rise up and in different things. So got to get all the little kinks out of it. And then to make it even more secure, I could put um, those garden stakes or garden tees um, in, in the middle here. Um, for each line of every bed. It's kind of a lot of tees, but it kind of ensures that you get a really even watering, which is really important for a lot of plants. Okay, so I've got everything blown out. It's all nice and clean, ready to go. So now I'm gonna plant my row of zucchini crooked squash, and then I'll just lay out my drip lines just like I did for these beds. And this is where I direct seeded six beds of um, Provider bush beans. These are awesome, awesome, awesome bush beans. The spreading percentage came out really well. They're still popping up here and there. Well, real stoked on those. The ones are. This is what they look like after about a month uh, after sprouting. And these ones will start putting off flowers pretty soon here. In about another two, three weeks, I'll have some beans growing. And they're, they're ready. They reach maturity in about 50 days. 